Thanks so much to all of the wonderful patrons of The Nerdy Narrative. Join now to support the channel and help pick books that I review. Link in the description below. What up nerds? Welcome back. My name is Leslie and today on The Nerdy Narrative is the weekly reads. This is a video where I just talk about all the things that I've read over the past week, what I'm planning to read next, except in this case, it's gonna be the last couple of weeks because unfortunately I managed to pick up the ick somewhere around here and I've been a little sick over the last week or so. Hopefully I sound more normal today than in my TBR video that went up on Monday or Tuesday, I don't know. The last couple of weeks have been a bit of a fever dream. I haven't done a whole lot of reading because I don't know about y'all, when I'm sick, I just can't concentrate. I did try, but if I'm feeling feverish or I have a head cold, I just end up sitting there rereading the same paragraph or sentences over and over. So what I did for the majority of the time that I was sick is I watched a whole bunch of horror movies. I'm talking both Annabelle's, all of the Conjuring's. I rewatched the Rob Zombie remakes of Halloween and Halloween 2. What else did I watch? I watched Us. There was one other one I tried that I ended up not liking and quit that one. But then I moved over into thrillers like The Boondock Saints. I was due for a rewatch on that one. Once I started feeling better, I switched to binging TV shows. I'm all caught up on Bad Monkey and Slow Horses. Oh my goodness, if y'all are sleeping on those two, both of those shows are based off books. I'm gonna be getting in line at the library to get the audiobooks for both of those to check out excellent shows, but let's talk about what I have been reading. So I did finish The Butcher's Masquerade by Matt Denneman. This is the fifth book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series. Oh my goodness. This book was absolutely amazing. Every time I read one of these, I'm like, oh, this one's my favorite. Oh, this one's my favorite. No, The Butcher's Masquerade really is my favorite. A lot of people I've talked to have really enjoyed book six, which I'm about halfway through on the sixth book, which is The Eye of the Bedlam Bride. <sighs> This has gotten to be a move away from the humorous side of this lit RPG series to the more serious side. There's a much bigger picture has been revealed, a direction that Matt Denneman is gonna take. I am in it for the long run. I thought the seventh book was coming out on October 1st. I've been furiously refreshing, trying to see when it was gonna be available. I finally uncovered a Reddit post from Matt saying it's gonna be late October before book seven is out. And and the audiobook is going to be a couple of months after that. I'm a little disappointed that I have to wait, but then again, that's fine. It's not like I don't have plenty of other things to read and listen to in the meantime. I didn't even plan on Dungeon Crawler Carl. This was one that just kind of fell into my lap. My husband was hyping it up and I had to get on board and check it out. And so that's how that happened. Speaking of unplanned reading, I also did a reread of Nightfall by Daniel Barnett. This is one of my favorite horror series that I have read to date. The first half, the first arc of the series is complete. The first six books are available, but why did I pick now to reread Nightfall? It's not because it's spooky season, though it fits perfectly. It's because the first three audiobooks for the first three books of the series recently dropped. Oh my goodness, you guys, if you, if you have read the series with your eyes physically, I encourage you to try this in the audio audio format. Adam Gold is the narrator and he nailed it. This is a narrator that was able to capture the atmosphere, the ambiance, like what is going on in this world on the day, the last day in May when the sun went out. Madness ensues, looting, just all sorts of things. Adam Gold captured it in his voice and my gosh, his narration of the main character, John Hawthorne, who is somebody when you meet in Nightfall, you know that there's more to this character than what is being told to you on the page. You're just getting these vibes that there's something more to him. Is it good? Is it bad? It's so ambiguous. He does not seem like a trustworthy character. Adam Gold was able to capture those feelings in his voice. Ugh. And if you're going, I know that name, but I'm not sure where I know it from. Adam Gold was the narrator for Zach Argyle's Threadlight series. So if you listen to that and loved it, 
guys, you need to check out this post-apocalyptic series of what happens when the sun goes out or does it go out? Like what's really happening? I don't know. Ugh. Actually, I do know because I've read the first six books. Well, I don't even know the full scope of it yet, but I know a lot more than when I first read this one. This is such a special series to me. I actually have been an ARC reader for every book in the entire series. I was on board before the first one came out, so it's very special to me and being a part of that process. It's just a special series. This series is in the same category of love for me as Stephen King's The Dark Tower and Joseph Sale's book of thrice dead so if you're curious but i haven't quite sold you on it i am doing a giveaway daniel will give the codes for the first three audiobooks to one lucky winner if you would like to be entered into this giveaway please comment below nightmare land chronicles or say i want to be entered into the giveaway make sure you have your notifications turned on for when i comment back to you that you're the winner you also need to be following daniel barnett on instagram i will have his instagram linked in the description below and you're going to want to do this because when you listen to these first three books you're going to want to be watching for when the next three drop okay let's move on to what um the next book that i finished which is the ravening by daniel church okay this kind of ended up being read by me at the perfect time this is a book that i was almost done with when i got sick and you know i mentioned i had a fever for the first three days of being sick and i did keep trying to read and i was just having issues because i just couldn't concentrate but then after my fever went away i was still feeling a little loopy you know how when you have a head cold you feel as if you're underwater you're trying to get back in the groove you're trying to be productive you're trying to get moving and you're just feeling sluggish and slow your thought processes might be running a little slower. I mean, that's how it works for me. But uh, anyway, so I was kind of in that mindset where I was trying to get back in the groove of things when I was finally able to concentrate on these last 100 pages. Now, the entire time that I've been reading this little claustrophobic horror, I was questioning what was actually happening. Was this really happening to this character? Was she hallucinating? The author didn't make it easy because there were things happening, traumatic things happening to this character over the course of the story that could lead to conditions that would cause hallucinations. There's sensory deprivation. There is forced pregnancy where she is being, I would say, tortured. They're trying to get her to um, acquiesce and have this child that she did not want to have. She was very non-consenting to this process and the father in an attempt to break this character down because she is one hard ass female. Love that about her. And Jenna was resisting, so there's a point where he puts her in total darkness, sensory deprivation. And so there's so many things that happen to this character. It's wild. It's like a fever dream, which that's why I was saying I was in the right mindset of reading this because it just added an extra layer of, I wouldn't call it fun, torture to myself trying to figure out what was going on. So the author didn't make it easy on me to determine were the supernatural paranormal elements of the story actually happening or were they just something happening because of what this main character was going through now let me be the first to say if you read the book description of this it does nothing honestly the book description describes the prologue which is just a few pages it's very spooky it gives you this idea of where this story is going to go and it does not absolutely has nothing to really do with the book except it explains to you why this character jenna is the way that she is how it is that she approaches life why she has such walls built around her trust issues her fear of the woods oh my gosh the atmosphere and the setting of this book is probably my most scariest thing about it the author did such a good job describing this phobia that i felt it myself you just look at a group of trees and if you can't see through them it just gives you this immediate mistrust of what's going on back there but at other times the atmosphere was a safety net. It provided safety. I mean, y'all, it's just a very interesting, Jordan Peele, who can get me in touch with his people? This is absolutely the kind of material for one of his little bizarre 
horror flicks. If y'all have watched anything by Jordan Peele and you've loved any of it or all of it, I think this is a type of book for you. Now let's talk about the books that I am currently reading. I did start The Puzzle Box by Danielle Trussoni. This is the second book in the puzzle series and it is, in my opinion, incorrectly identified as a standalone. I'm over halfway through the book now and the first half I would have agreed with that. The second half, you are not going to understand the motivations of a whole lot of characters if you didn't read the first book. It's also my opinion, the first book was amazing, a five star read. The puzzle box is not living up to that. It is very much a second book syndrome. There is, in the first 25% of the book, the author keeps repeating all of the characteristics of acquired savant syndrome, which is what the main character, Mike Brink, suffered from. He had an injury in high school, a head injury while playing football, that made it so he sees things differently. His thought processes have changed, the way he views the world, the way he sees things. He sees things in colors and patterns, and he's just able to create and solve these really complicated puzzles. In the puzzle box, he's being asked to come to Japan and solve the legendary dragon puzzle. That sounds so cool. It's such a small part of the book. We take forever to get to Japan. He pretty much solves the puzzle quickly. And then there's this whole intrigue of who all is wanting to get the information that is held within the puzzle. And it's just not that good. I'm very sad to report that because I had such an amazing time reading the first one. And while we're talking about currently reading, have y'all heard about an app called, and I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong, Book Mori? I don't know. I think it's kind of a play on the word memory and keeping up with your books you're reading. I actually saw somebody talking about it on threads, which is one of the rare things good I have found on threads. I really wanted to like threads, but it's going to take a whole lot of work trying to get my timeline the way that I want it because my gosh, I can't open it without some asshole like, um, so yeah, there's this recent conversation popped up where audiobooks aren't considered reading. What do y'all think? I automatically block all of those stupid people who love to do that whole clickbait shit. There's so many people that will post the same thing like five times in a row. It'll be five people that's literally copied and pasted and you don't know who the one was that actually started the conversation. I just blocked those suckers so quickly. So Book Murray, it's really cute and I will say that I did pay for the non-ad version, the version that will do an automatic backup and let me do some things just to test it out. I want to say it was like three dollars a month to do this. There is a discount if you do it yearly but I wanted to try it a few months to see if I like it. But I really love the layout and it shows you which books you're reading, the percentage. It'll send you a reminder daily to update. You can have a little thing here where you, if you want to make sure you're spending a certain amount of time reading each day, you can do that. You can also add a note where you can input it yourself. You can do a text from camera, text from phone if you want to take a picture of a quote. I was able to import my library from Goodreads and if you're having trouble figuring out how to do that, I can teach you, I can show you how to do that. Just send me a message and I'll tell you. You can create collections, which I've enjoyed doing because sometimes when I make a review video, I want to include cards in that video of other books that may fall in the same category that people might would enjoy watching. A kind of, if you like that, then try this kind of thing. It's a really visually appealing app. I've been enjoying it so far, but that's just a little bit of what that looks like if you want to try it out for yourselves. Hashtag not sponsored. I just wanted to share because I know a lot of people have been looking for a long time an alternative to good Goodreads and I think that's going to be one for me. I mean, I'm still going to use Goodreads to update because that's where a lot of people still go to look for books. So I do have one other book that I'm reading. I already mentioned it at the beginning of the video. I am about halfway through the sixth book of Dungeon Crawler Carl. This is such a great series. I just cannot get enough of it. I am loving all of you who have started reading the series and are sending me messages of things you're finding funny, your favorite 
favorite parts, your favorite characters, please continue to do so. I am having so much fun reading your messages and talking with you about it. So now let's talk about what am I going to read next. I should finish both of my current reads in the next couple of days and since I'm still feeling a little under the weather I know I'm going to be home resting this weekend. So the next book that I am planning to read will be The Land of the Living and the Dead by Shauna Lawless. This is the third book in the Gale Song trilogy. This book came in a few days ago. I already have the audiobook. I had that on pre-order. I am going to be diving into this one. I saw one of the Gwen brothers posted on Twitter recently and the last day or so, it might have been yesterday or so, I don't know. Everything runs together. He had a lot of glowing things to say about it. He said the second half was just wild. I am so excited to finally see what the conclusion of that series is going to be. I'm also very, very excited for my next romantic series, which is A Betrayal of Storms by Ben Alderson. Ben Alderson is a former booktuber, so I'm sure a lot of you know him from watching previous booktube videos of his. This is a series he initially self-published. It's been picked up by Angry Robot Books. The first three books are going to be coming out over the next three months. This one comes out October 22nd. The next one is in November, and then the third one, I want to say, is like December 3rd. The fourth one is going to be coming out soon. I don't have a release date for that one yet, but I am excited to read this one. All I know is this one is fair related. I think I'm going to absolutely love it, and if I do, I might just give one of Sarah J. Moss's series a try. I think I have to read A Court of Thorns and Roses before the adult fiction one, the Crescent City one. I believe there's some crossover character information there that someone told me would be better if I read them in order. Let me know. Back that up for me. Those of you that have read those series, let me know in the comments down below where a good starting area is with Sarah J. Mass. Provided, of course, I enjoy Ben's. And to just keep going down the vein of fantasy, my next read after A Betrayal of Storms is going to be The Fall of the Giants by Gregory Contaxis. Man, I am so glad at this point that I have not had time to read this one because the author posted that the audiobook is available now. I immediately went and picked it up on Audible because Guy Barnes is the narrator and he just really nailed the narration of the first book in the Dance of Light series. So I'm going to be continuing my journey through this series. I am so excited. Sometimes it works out when us booktubers don't get to all the books that we want to every month. That just worked out really well. I would have been wanting to do an immediate reread if I had already read it and then saw that the audiobook was available. At any rate, it would have ended up being in my Audible library for future rereads. That's all of my book news for the week. In channel news, if you've been hearing me talk about Howard Andrew Jones, The Chronicles of Hanavar series, it's a sword and sorcery fantasy series. I've been gushing about that over the last few months. We recently were delivered the devastating news that he has a terminal illness. We don't know how long he may have left with us, but another fellow booktuber, Jonathan Cohn, some other people who we have this little small group on Twitter where we've been gushing about this series, came together at Jonathan's behest to talk about in a video why we love the writing style of Howard Andrew Jones and what it was about the character of Hanover in particular that we love so much. Jonathan posted that video this last week. I would love to share all of that with you. I'll have it linked in the description below if you'd like to check that out. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you next time week. Thanks again to all of the Nerdy Narrative patrons with a special shout out to my Nerds Radiant, Chad, John, Gail, Amanda, Ashley, Star, Tara, Anne, Andrew, Amanda, Kate, Ev, and Sharon.